It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. Hi, everybody. This is Mike Adams from the Up North Journal podcast. Thanks for joining us on one of our mini casts where we're talking with Bobby Vargas of PSC Marketing. If you want to elevate your archery game or success in the field, take a listen. Welcome back for another PSE Tech Tip. This week, we got Bobby Vargas back online with us. Bobby, um, I know it's warm out there, so I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it right. Got um, it right. We did uh we did have a cold spell cold spell once last December. We got down to I think thirty seven one night and I had to put a sweater on, but oh thirty seven. Uh, Here in Michigan we wear shorts when it's thirty seven degrees. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get you up here so you can see some snow one time. Oh, I would love to. I'll, I'll load my pockets with them before I come home. There you go. You and you'd be drinking water on the way back. <laughs> It'd melt by the time you got there. Hey, well, listen, you know, this week, uh, we, we've been, you know, leading up to bow season here. Um, one thing we haven't talked about is release aid. Um, you know, there's a lot of different styles, you know, back tension, the, the wrist strap style. You know, people shoot with fingers. Um, obviously, on these high-performance bows, we don't want to do that. But when we're talking about release aids, what are some things we need to consider before just going out and purchasing one? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And by far the most popular style of release aid is your wrist strap caliper style. Um, I do know some folks who, who hunt with back tension. Um, they have a lot more discipline than I do, um, but uh, some folks hunt with back tension and a T-handle style release. And there are a lot of uh, T-handle uh, uh, style releases that were designed for hunting, too. So that's a very, very good option as well. But by far the most popular is a wrist strap style caliper release. Um, I'd say nine and a half guys out of ten will have that strapped to their wrist when you see them in hunting camp. But some of the most important things to look at is, um, you know, definitely, you know, cost is a huge deciding factor for all of us, but um, get the one that, uh, um, that the most expensive one you can afford. Not the most expensive one available, but the most expensive one you can afford. Um, the, the old saying about you get what you pay for holds true in, in archery equipment too. So I promise you that if you get one that works great for you today, you, you won't regret it because if you go out and buy that cheap one, you're going to end up going back to buy an, the, uh, an upgrade before long anyway. So get the best one that you can afford to start with. And some of the features to look at are are the, the features of the caliper. There's uh, If you're shooting a D-loop on your string, which most of us are, there are a lot of really great uh, hook style releases where it just has the hook out at the end where it's quick a catch on the on the loop. But if you don't like that, um, look at a, at a, a dual or single jaw caliper style. And what, and some of the more popular features of that uh, now are a spring loaded caliper where you pull the trigger back and you let the trigger go and it automatically closes on your loop. So that helps with uh, with with uh, uh, ease of loading. Um, the release onto your loop when you're out there. But uh, the s- most important feature that I would look at when I'm looking for a release is adjustability. And not just adjustability of the trigger tension or the trigger weight, but adjustability of the length of the connector. Because you really want to get a release where, where when you're holding that, that release under tension, the trigger sits under the second digit of your index finger. You want your release to be able to get short enough to get that trigger there. And what that does is that helps you to get into the correct position onto your release aid and lets you use proper back tension and form when you're executing the shot. You don't want to get a release aid where the 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 uh, strap is too long or the connector is too long where you have to reach your index finger way out front to get to that trigger because the only way you're going to be able to get it to activate at that point is to punch it. Mm-hmm. You, you don't you don't want to punch it. So you want to get one that's adjustable enough to get that trigger underneath the second digit of your index finger. Kind of like fitting a, a firearm to to you. You need to fit that release to to your to your hand, so, like you said, so you're not reaching out and trying to grab at it and punch it. Yep, that's exactly right. Exactly right. If you if you get it set the right way, it's going to work well for you, and your your downrange accuracy and performance is going to is going to grow leaps and bounds. 
All right. Well, those are some great points to think about. Uh, like you said, you know, you get what you pay for. And obviously, the the more expensive ones got a little more adjustability built into them. Uh, some That's things right. that are really important. So, all right. Well, we appreciate you taking time and talking about release aids with us this week. And uh, as always, you can go over to the PSC Archery YouTube page, check out any of the other questions you might have over there, search their videos. There's a, there's plenty of them to answer most of your questions over there. So make sure you check those out. That'll do it for us for this tech tip. Thanks once again for listening to one of our minicasts with Bobby Vargas of PSC Archery Marketing. If you'd like to listen to our full-length podcast, make sure you go over to our website, upnorthjournal.com. You can find this along with other great things on our Facebook page, Twitter page, and Instagram.